Welcome to Tokyo Wave, recorded in a live studio in Harajuku, Japan, with your hosts, Aaron and Parker. Alright everyone, welcome to episode 95 of Tokyo Wave. We are your hosts, Aaron Randall and Parker Allen. Today we are joined again by Akia Hunter and black metal warlock Matt Ketchum. On Tokyo Wave, we bring you weekly updates from our studio in Harajuku. Join us in segments featuring this week's top news, political happenings, business, and other random stuff. To get us started, here are this week's top news highlights. Japan to lift COVID non-resident foreigner entry ban for 106 nations. Cost of leaving home to attend Tokyo area private colleges hits record high of $18,000. Japanese soap firm makes April Fool's joke reality with cat seducing fabric softener. Meow. This week in Japan. All right, let's get started. Japan to lift COVID non resident foreigner entry ban for 106 nations. Kyoto News has reported that Japan will lift its entry ban on non-resident foreign nationals from 106 countries, including Britain, India, and the United States, starting from April 8th. The government said, this all being part of procedures to gradually ease COVID-19 restrictions. The policy change, however, will not drastically change Japan's pandemic-induced strict border controls, as it will continue to suspend the validity of visas issued before December the 2nd, except for diplomats, spouses of Japanese nationals, and permanent residents, among others. Visas will not be issued in principle unless those seeking to enter Japan fall under, quote, exceptional circumstances, such as visits to those who are seriously ill or for funerals. Foreign tourists remain banned from entering Japan. Of the 106 countries subject to the change announced by the foreign ministry, the list includes Asian countries such as Cambodia, Indonesia, Malaysia, Mongolia, the Philippines, and Thailand, as well as European countries such as France, Germany, Italy, and Spain. Countries no longer subject to entry ban will also include Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates as well as Latin American and African nations such as Brazil, Chile, Morocco, and Tunisia. This latest move comes in line with Japan's easing on April 1st of its travel warning for the 106 nations because of the pandemic, with Japanese nationals no longer recommended against visiting these areas. However, this does not mean that tourists are allowed to travel to Japan quite yet. What this does mean, though, is that business travel to Japan for a large part of the world no longer requires mandatory quarantine, which makes it a lot easier for short business trips. This is actually huge news for multinational companies because some countries were subject to a stricter quarantine than others. So if mm. you're having a bunch of execs coming from a bunch of different countries, some people could just get in and others had to do mandatory quarantine, which mm -hmm. for executives is like, who the hell wants to do that? Yeah, yeah, nobody's got time for that. I mean, hey, this is a move in the right direction. Obviously, everyone's very uh, eagerly anticipating uh, tourists being able to come in, but I think uh, we're on our way there. Let's see what happens. And up next, cost of leaving home to attend Tokyo area private colleges hits record high of $18,000. The Yamanisha has reported that it costs a record high of 2.2 million yen, that's about 18,000 US dollars, on average for a student to leave home to enter a private university in the greater Tokyo area in academic 2021. The figure totals the average costs of taking entrance exams, enrolling in the schools, and living in the Tokyo region, and it increased by about 17,000 yen, or about 140 US dollars, from the previous academic year. The Tokyo Federation of Private University Faculty and Staff Unions released the survey results on April 6. The main factors behind the increase were apparently growing payments to schools for their first year, including tuition and enrollment fees, as well as rising housing costs. 
Meanwhile, an average student's cost of living, subtracting rent from the money sent from home, was 650 yen, roughly $5.30 per day, the second lowest amount following the 670 yen record in the 2020 academic year. This survey was conducted between May and July of last year, and the Federation received responses from 4,900 guardians of students who had enrolled in 11 private universities and two-year colleges in Tokyo, Saitama, Chiba, and Tochigi prefectures. The average amount of money sent from home in June onward was 86,000 yen, about $700 per month. That was up 3,800 yen, approximately $31, from a year earlier. But the average rent also rose 2,500 yen, about $20. You know, the rent is too damn high. <laughs> especially for students. And, you know, with the pandemic, uh, I think a lot of students are choosing to live closer to home, and it's actually a potential boon for rural universities who had always lost out to students who sought the prestige of attending college in the Tokyo area. Absolutely. And, you know, talking about rural universities, it's really funny that, uh, you know, I get it why so many people, you know, come to Tokyo to go to university. It's similar in America, right? Like with Boston and, you know, uh, Southern California. But the rural universities in Japan are gigantic and gorgeous. And um, in Tokyo, they're like a building, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah, and I mean, I think pre-pandemic, uh, a lot of people wanted to go to college in Tokyo because there was this nightlife and you can go out and get messed up every weekend or every exactly. day or every hour. But uh, yeah, yeah. in this sort of pandemic situation, the allure of Tokyo for students isn't really that much anymore, I don't think. For sure, for sure. And up next, Japanese soap firm makes April Fool's joke reality with cat-seducing fabric softener. The Mainichi has also reported soap maker Daichi Sekken has developed a fabric softener containing natural silver vine extract that it says is irresistible for our feline friends. Exactly one year after the firm posted a similar joke product on social media as an April Fool's prank. Fun's luxury number 22, Matatabi Softener, is unfortunately not for sale. After the Itakura Gunma Prefecture-based firm set up an official Twitter account, the employee in charge, and who loved cats, had the idea for a fabric conditioner that could make its users popular with felines. On April 1st, 2021, the company tweeted, quote, we're going to sell silver vine fragrance for cats to enjoy. It's a magical fabric softener that makes felines want to naturally snuggle with you. And it's the ultimate weapon for when they don't want to be held. Along with an admission that the whole thing was a gag. The company began to work to actually develop the product after discovering results of Japanese university's research on silver vine. The study found the silver vine contains a chemical called nepetalactyl that keeps mosquitoes away and that cats roll in it and rub up against it to keep the bloodsuckers at bay. It is non-toxic for felines. Oh, thank God for that. That would be uh, horribly ironic. So this uh, April Fool's joke was a hit inside the soap firm and product development staff began using any downtime they had to create the actual cat attracting fabric softener. To keep the product cat oriented, natural silver vine extract was used without any artificial fragrances. Only a small amount of extract is contained within the fabric softener, so it does not overstimulate any felines in the area. <laughs> that would have interesting consequences. <laughs> the product's label has a picture of a cat and silver line along with the phrase, we're inseparable now. And it's a special softener for you. To show that the product was real, the company tweeted, we actually made it. The post was sent on March 31st to avoid any confusion. Many people who saw the post said they wanted the silver vine fabric softener, but a company official told the Mainichi Shimbun that though commercialization is, quote, in the back of our head, there are many issues that need to be cleared up, such as how to optimize the amount of silver vine extract. You know, I've always thought 
it was really kind of interesting and weird. Uh, uh, catnip, right? Catnip is like drugs for cats. Like they literally get high. And I guess we're discovering, or they discovered a new drug kind of for cats. It's like cats really like doing drugs. Yeah, man. <laughs> they like to get high, you know. <laughs> They're just like Americans. <laughs> yeah. It's it's really wild. It's it's really weird to see too their interactions with catnip. But one of my friends has a bunch of cats and it's like it always blows my mind. I have to say, you know, like US commercials for like cat products are the best. Like fancy feast. I mean, <laughs> who came up with that? They must be like a billionaire. Yeah. Fancy feast for cats. It's wild. And up next, we have a special interview with Matt Ketchum. You're now listening to Tokyo Wave. Welcome back to Tokyo Wave, Matt. Hello, comrades. How you doing, Matt? What's going on? Uh, not much. I'm... Yeah, doing a bunch of doing a bunch of stuff. Talking about doing a bunch of stuff, um, how's it going in Yugawara? You mentioned that you might be going up to do some mountain climbing in Gunma soon. Yeah, I'm actually doing that. Uh, well, not in Gunma. Change of plans. Uh, I'm going out to. Well, tomorrow I'll be doing some climbing. Uh, where am I going? Mitake. There we go. Which is like Okutama, so it's still Tokyo. Um, but I'm going out there. Kind of long story, but basically it's just easier if I go out there tonight and stay the night and then get up and then go climb. Um, yeah, so that's what's happening. <laughs> so are you going with uh, the infamous uh, Gunma Mountaineer or solo? Or? No, solo, solo. That's unrelated. This Actually, I scheduled this a long time ago, and then my schedule just ended up getting really busy, so like I can't go all the way out to Gunma. <laughs> so, Matt, when you say you're going mountain climbing and you're going out the night before, like, do you set up like a tent and like you're camping on the base of the mountain somewhere? Oh, or? God, I wish you hadn't said that. That's such a good idea. No, I just got a, <laughs> I just got a hotel room. Oh, right. <laughs> it's okay. really boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, from, from like a finance. So if, cause the issue was it starts Saturday morning at like nine. Right. And if I take a train, if I, from, from where I live in Yugawara, if I take a train out, it's like three and a half hours to get there. And if I drive out, it's like two and a half. Either way, it's like a lot of time mm -mm -mm. and I don't want to have to get up at like, six or whatever and like drive out and so i was just like all right i'll come into the office on friday i'll bring all my gear and then i'll just take a train out to the where mitake or whatever station it's called stay the night looks like a nice super small town so i've, I've not really explored it very much so like actually at all so i am actually a little bit excited to just like go see what this probably dusk town uh will hold for in store for me tonight so when you see mountain climbing too, you know, I think a lot of people have a different image in their head of mountain climbing. Are you talking like Mission Impossible 2, Tom Cruise, like no harness on the edge of like angular it's even, impossible it's, it's even better than that i don't know what i'm talking about okay i know that it has something to do with rocks <laughs> and that i need bouldering shoes and i have those and i brought chalk as well so <laughs> so there will be some some level of climbing on rocks <laughs> okay i'm not okay. sure exactly what's the chalk for to outline your body after oh you no fall? like 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 hand chalk right okay uh, yeah. uh. Like, which is very similar to to uh cliffhanger starring sylvester stallone um because he had he had chalk for his hands ah. so that he could grip and so that's how you know how to bring chalk because you watch the stallone movie right yeah i guess I had a completely different image for the chalk. I thought it was like to mark where you went. No, so no, if you no, get no, lost, no, you've you can... got like a bag of chalk. Okay. Yeah. It's a, it's a white powdery substance anyway. <laughs> you like ride on the, the rock, like don't use this one. It's a loose <laughs> <laughs> loser. <laughs> that was here. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's happening tomorrow. And then it's actually a mega packed. Uh, weekend I've got so I've got to go out there tonight and then I do that tomorrow from like 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. or whatever and then I've got to meet some people in Shibuya at I guess like five or six um, who are involved I won't say any names but a really neat uh, and very major smart city project 
um, who also play Mahjong. And the whole reason that I am meeting with them is because I wanted to learn how to play with Mahjong, whatever. Uh, so I got to go do that. And then some other stuff. And then on, on Sunday, uh, oh, well, Aaron, uh, Terry, uh, and her people are coming down to Yugawara. And so I'm going to go at least show them good pizza in Yugawara at a place called, I forget. Uh, That's what Yugawara is famous for, by the way, pizza. Not, you know, onsen or surfing. Yeah, anything else. Um, pizza. It's really good. What's the place called? Let me look it up real quick. Uh, ga, 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 ga. It's like it's like Sebon or something. Uh, we were talking about it in our chat. Oh, where'd it go? There you are. No, that's not you. Uh, this one. Uh, da, 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 da. Salute. There we go. <laughs> Salute. <laughs> yeah, um, super good pizza there. And so then I think after that, I'm free. So like from Sunday at 3 p.m. I can finally rest. (laughs) (laughs) No sleep for the weary. Jeez, dude. Yeah. I mean, after that, because we just dug a new uh, farm plot as well um, that I kind of want to get planting on Uh, (laughs) that there is some interesting local politics there. Uh, Yeah. When you dig a hole. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Like, we were fine. It's just like, the uh, I don't want to get into it. Uh, but no, we made a six bed, what, like raised bed farm plots. Uh, we had to dig some of those out the other that day. That hole is too big there, boy. You got to get a license for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny because it's probably true. <laughs> well, Matt, so you said before we started that you have gotten into surfing and that your first experience could have killed you. Tell oh, us more. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, why? Oh, actually, it's more complicated. So there's a backstory to that in that in Yugawara at the garbage farm that I sometimes work on. One of the guys who lives in an abandoned house there. <laughs> I love that lead in. Um, is the rumor is that he, I guess was like one of the first, if not the first, uh, like major international surfing stars from Japan back in like the sixties or something. And so now he's like a mountaintop hermit. Um, but he also, and he's, he's this pudgy guy. He's got bad knees. He's got, he's bald and has a ponytail. Uh, and he's very quiet. Too like very much a hermit. Sounds like an old surfer dude to me. Yes, I bet there's like a mysterious backstory or something. He's but like, I, yeah, I passed yeah, around but, doobies with uh, the Beach Boys in '65. Yeah, right. But so he's got, he's actually made other akia into functional surfboard shops on top of this mountain. Um, and so like a year ago or whatever, I was like, oh, surfing, that sounds cool. Like, I wonder, I wonder if he'd give me one. And so he did, but then I didn't have a car and I mean, I'm close to the beach, but I'm on top of a hill and basically just like carrying the board all the way there kind of would have sucked. So you had a board, but you had no practical way of getting it it to the ocean where you use the board. Exactly. Um, and so, but then I got a car, right? Uh, the Jimny. The Jimny. That was on our last episode. With yeah. Matt. And so I was, I was like, oh, good. Okay. I can go surfing now. But then I thought, uh, hmm, how did this work out? Because I went to get, what was it? I went to get scuba licensing, my scuba license. And then I think I basically just thought, like, you know what? I could go surfing on my own. I have no idea what I'm doing. But like the scuba experience was pretty good. So what if there's like a surf shop or a surf school somewhere around here? That seems like a a good thing to do. And there was one. There's one in Chigasaki. It's great. Uh, It's called Surf Finesse. Uh, And my teacher's name is Gio. He's a real gnarly dude. Um, And so, yeah, uh, book the surfing lessons. And I'm like, holy shit, now I can surf. And that was the first time, which is when the storm was. So I guess I can now talk about that. And I'd booked it like, I don't know, a week or two in advance. And it, oh, no, it was like a last minute cancellation. And he, so like a day or two before, he was like, oh, no, we can squeeze you in. You should come on out. And so I do. And I'm really excited about this. But like, it was like a serious, pretty serious storm that day. Uh, and I'm driving out along the coast and just looking at the waves like, uh, Oh, this isn't. Yeah, yeah. The day that you went out, like a mutual friend of ours said, like, Matt went surfing on that day? I went in the afternoon, but it was like deathly. Yeah, it was. What it, the hell was he doing out there? Yeah, it was pretty. Well, and I, so I arrived at the place and I, 
again, the teacher guy, Gio, super cool dude. He's awesome. I like him a lot. Um, but I think when I first showed up, I, w- I wonder if he was a little bit dismissive because it was just like such a heavy day. Because he was like, yo, dude, like you need to go go take a look at those waves. I was like, all right. And I did and kind of gulped a little bit. But aside from that, it's like, you know what? I booked it. I want to do this. I'm here. I probably won't die. Uh, you know, let's weigh those odds. And it seems like they're in my favor. <laughs> so and he was like, all right, cool. Let's do it. So I got suited up in a wetsuit and everything. Um, he gave me a, a big long board. And I mean, that was the thing because the waves. Oh, my God. Surfing is so difficult. Um and the waves were massive. So I was just getting like pummeled. I must have looked so pathetic. Uh, Cause I'm just like trying like very poorly paddling through these massive waves that are trying to kill me with honestly like no actual goal. Cause it's not like I've ever stood up on a surfboard in the middle of a storm or anything. So I just figured it was really good, like good practice to start with. That's um, wild. Yeah. I almost broke my nose, but only once. So that was good. When you say longboard, how long? So like in, you know, I come from Florida, Orlando, and uh, I grew up surfing on longboards because the waves are, the waves are really small um, on the East Coast. It's not like West Coast or Hawaii where you have like gigantic waves or Japan. Um, so like we surf on boards that are like probably like eight to nine feet tall. Yeah, this is like seven to eight. Maybe. Oh, wow. Something like that. And so in the middle of like a massive storm, it's ridiculously difficult to do anything <laughs> with that. Those boards are a monster to yeah, manage. Yeah. Oh, my God. And so, yeah, I remember Gio was like, dude, you need balls of steel to do what you just did. I was like, <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> That's our line. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's cool, too, because so. Oh, but going back to the board that I had. Right. And so I do it for the first time. I'm like, oh, man, this is fucking rad. I'm like, yeah, I want to do this. I've got a board. This is great. I'm going to go use it. And so then I go back and I finally critically look at the board after a year or so. Because like I hadn't I knew that I had no means of transportation for it. So I knew that it was sort of dead in the water, which meant that I wasn't like looking at it very or like paying attention to the board. It's a right? surfboard, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, like, it's yeah. over there and it does. Uh, it's hard to be surfing. So, and so I go I go grab the board. And I'm putting it in my car and then I realized, wait, this thing doesn't have any fins. And so... Your board had no fins? No fins. <laughs> what? Like, it had a place just for fins that just surfboard. did not... The fins were not installed. Oh, I didn't hear that part. Yeah, it wasn't a finless surfboard. It's that it was supposed to have fins. They just weren't present. <laughs> did right? you catch any waves? Well, it was really flat that day. Uh, um, okay. But I, I distinctly remember thinking like, man, that's totally going to mark me like just a dumb fuck but i really want to and like again it probably won't kill me (laughs) right so i want to go practice paddling anyway and i don't think i need fins for that so fuck it let's do this um and so i go down to the beach and like i do my stuff and i feel like very self-conscious uh yeah and then then and then i went back but anyway, so... And so now you're in the market for a surfboard with fins, I hear. <laughs> yes, I am. Well, no, so that's actually an awkward situation that I put myself in a little bit. Uh, so I went back to surf... Uh, hermit, dude. Surf Hermit, right? And I was like, yo, there's no fins. And actually, it's a really tiny board from the, like, performance board from the early 90s for, like, pros, which obviously I am not. Um, and so it's totally unsuited, even if it had fins for, for me. And I was like, I, oh, you know, can I trade you this for, for, uh, do you, like, do you have a long board? And he got back to me a few days later. Right. And so in that interim, I was like, oh no, I need to ask Gio cause Gio hooked me up with a wetsuit too. Right. Um, and so I asked Gio too, like if he could find me a long board, he's like, yeah, man, I'll take a look around. So Gio gets back to me first, says, Hey, I found one. It's like 55,000 yen. Uh, pretty good for, you know, the level that you're at. I think it's a good fit, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then immediately after that surf hermit also gets back to me. It's like, yeah, I got a long board for you. It's pretty good. I think it suits your needs. It'll cost you a case of beer per month. Uh, what do you say? And so now I've got both of these favors that I put out there or asked two separate people are coming back to me, both in the positive and I don't want to like put either of them down because it's like, well, I asked you a favor and then you did the thing for me, which was really nice. And if I just say, oh, actually, you know what? I don't really need it. I'd look like a dick. So now I think I'm going to have two surfboards for a little bit because the beer board is is like a month by month kind of thing. So 
It's a case of beer per month. That's the rental agreement. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's I want to see that contract. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> this sounds like some Florida shit. Yeah, like let me bring up uh, what's the uh, the text that I got about it, it. Was the type of beer specified? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Hold on. Uh, da, 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 da. uh is it note of Goshi? Kidding. kidding. No, it's kidding. kidding. Oh, it's kidding. Yeah, like real beer. Yeah. Yeah, five hundred, but it's five hundred milliliter six pack, not not like regular size. Six okay, pack. okay, he's a yeah, he likes his drink. Yeah, but but if I wanted, check this out. So per month, it's a six six pack of beer of, or a six pack of Tall Boys per month. But if I go for a year, it's only twenty four beers. <laughs> what? <laughs> but here's the thing: I don't think I want two surfboards for a year. So you're gonna go. I think I, 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 I think I'm gonna go like two months just to be like, all right, I really yeah. appreciate it. So here's, I guess, twelve beers or something. Oh, you, you're, you're but I pay also for think, two months yeah, up front. But yeah, right. But and I you, think because you got two hands. I think all, this is another thing that I have to. And this is like Enoch a politics, right? Think about it this way: old surfer legend dude who lives on top of a mountain and is very quiet and doesn't communicate with very many people finally opens up to mild mannered Matthew Ketchum, who's trying to surf, and says, "If you give me beer, I will make you surf." I need to go drink with him. Seriously. Like I can't just buy him beer and say, "Here's your beer." Like I need to go start a campfire, sit around it, and hear his stories. <laughs> Seriously, I mean. That sounds like a great podcast idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. I hadn't thought of that, but you're correct. So, Matt, uh, surfing in Japan versus, like, Florida and the U.S., I'm curious of the differences. Um, you know, when I when I was surfing, like, when I was 17, um, everyone was out, you know, kind of on this, like, couple kilometer length uh, area where you could catch the waves. Mm. And the first thing everybody learns is how to perfectly put your body on top of the board mm -hmm. because of sharks. Ah, yeah, yes. So we, we have really bad sharks in Florida. Like you, people lose limbs all the fucking time. And, but so you have, so the first thing, like, like, uh, I think even the lifeguards and stuff, uh, they will ask you like, have you trained? Like, are you, are you, do you know how to boy, have you been through your shark training yet? Cause, uh, I'm sure you've, uh, you know, encountered a few gators, but these sharks, uh, if, if the lifeguards catching you paddling and trying to catch waves when, cause they're, you know, you're with like, uh, you know, some between like 2,200 people across a couple of kilometers yeah, yeah. and everyone yells out shark. So everyone like, you know, for, for like, that sounds terrifying. This is invigorating. Shark! It's very terrifying, especially when you're 16, 17 and like, you really don't know what you're doing. Um, and you know, there's reports on the TV about people losing limbs, like you know, what once a week. What am I doing out here? Why did I do this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jaws was a documentary. Yeah, this this uh, a lot of my friends didn't surf for this reason. A lot of people don't surf. That for That seems reason. reasonable. Yeah, yeah. I, think. I don't think but I there, would there, surf there if there are were no sharks, sharks everywhere. There are no sharks. What's really? the scariest in thing in Yugawara out there in the oh, deep blue sea? Um, Got jellyfish? No, That's, no jellyfish. I don't think so. Wow, that's another big issue, dude. Yeah, jellyfish like Yugo, bites. Yugo is just such such a just a nice beach. It it doesn't want to hurt you. It wants to love you, right? Chigasaki too. I mean, the waves are pretty gnarly, but there's not uh like it's it's just a sandbar. Like there's there's one rock that I can think of uh, that like is maybe a threat. So you want to avoid that. Um, but like other Sir, than that, mind the rock. I, I think honestly, I think the biggest threat are the local communities because apparently they're incredibly like clicky and, and insular. And so you got to like really make sure not to step on any toes and just like look out and stuff, which is honestly like it's it's a good uh, I'm enjoying this learning experience of like, dude, don't just run into the fucking walk, like sit on the beach for like 10 minutes, study the waves, understand where they're breaking, like all this stuff. Look out, look at where all the people are sitting, you know, like who's got some skill, who doesn't like just sit there, understand it and then go in and then you'll have a good time. So is it like, is it like this seniority system? It's like, okay, well, Tanaka-san's been surfing for the longest, so he gets to catch the big I, wave. I want to say yes, but it's also unspoken. So I have no idea 
about any of it, which is another reason why Geo dude down in Chiga or up in Chigasaki is awesome. Cause like, you know, hang, he knows all the people like he's hooking me up. Like he's talking to his friends who have surfboards and wetsuits that I can then buy. So like, I feel like that's a really good into the community sort of thing. So he's like surf Yoda. Yeah. Or like a dealer. Really? <laughs> surf <laughs> dealer. Yeah. Yo man, I got this wetsuit. Uh, it's really dank. Right. <laughs> But it actually sounds like a really bad term for wetsuit. Yeah, dank wet. I don't want a dank wetsuit. That sounds, that sounds like oh, it but speaking, really speaking bad. of wetsuits, though, it's funny. I so I got one that doesn't have a zipper. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with you, and man? So I have to go in through like the neck hole. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> you can, like strangle yourself. Uh, well, getting it on isn't that bad, but like getting it off the first time I was trying to get it off, that was like. It, like this is a straight jacket and I the can't get it out. The first time you're trying to get wow. it off, what you talking about there? Yeah, it, damn it's, man, it's not. So the basically, best. you have like a wetsuit that has more similarities to a condom than a wetsuit. Yeah, actually, <laughs> dude, mad respect. Practice safe surfing. Yeah, mad respect. Uh, you know, Floridians. Um, the water's always warm in right, Florida, right, right. almost year round. I mean, and I know here in Japan. When I've gone to the beaches, it's only like temperate in like August and July. Mm-mm-mm. So, I mean, you went on a day that was particularly cold, yeah. rainy, windy. Yep. And it was, yeah, freezing ass cold. Well, I mean, you get the wetsuit. I've also got, so now I, oh, on the first day too, I only, because I have long hair, right? And so I, I went just like with uh, like a hair tie. And that actually ended up being fine. But then when I was in Yuga Water with my, my shitty board that doesn't have any fins, um, totally lost my hair tie. And so there I am with just like hair all over the place, which sucks. So then I, I also I got a like a neoprene hood as well, which holds my hair back. I got the booties as well, which is good. So are you like a surf ninja? Kind of, yeah. Like I'm in basic, yeah, I'm in a full neoprene suit uh, when surfing. A black new... Wait, no, it's not black. It's like blue and white. What am I thinking? <laughs> so it's like an 80s theme. Kind of. Uh, like, but not skiing, or I'm not surfing so much as like... It's like an 80, 80s skiing themed uh, wetsuit. With no zipper. <laughs> with no zipper. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, yeah. It works, whatever. Well, that's the other thing, too. Like, I'm the type, this is what I did with camping at the onsen place as well in Yugawara. It's like, give me the shittiest possible version of this experience. And from that, I will learn everything. And so now that I have such an uncomfortable wetsuit, anything is better. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. Exactly. So no shortboards? I thought I thought Japan was all about the. Short- oh, there's a lot of shortboards. I just I'm just a beginner, so longboard makes much more sense. Yeah, it's harder to catch on the shortboards for sure. Exactly, but I look forward to the day that I can get on a shortboard. So like surfing is also really big in Kamakura, and one thing that always blew my mind is how you'll see people on bicycles with surfboard attachments. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? You don't yeah. know about these? You surfed and you don't know about these? Wait, wait. Bic- no, Bicycles with surfboard attachments. Okay. And apparently some Japanese dude invented this and has the patent for it. In Shigasaki. Oh, yeah, yeah. You were talking about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because my scuba dive train, my scuba trainer lives in Chigasaki and he just started surfing through like he was at the bar and there was this old surf dude and he was like, oh, surfing. And the surf dude was like, yeah, surfing. <laughs> <laughs> and then they started surfing together. And it turns out he's the dude who invented this thing. So where does the surfboard go? It's, it's like a side holster for your bike or moped. Uh, OK, OK. On the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. saw mopeds in Kamakura. Too. Yeah, yeah. I'm also like just thinking of like a dude with a helmet with like a surfboard attached to it. (laughs) (laughs) That's ridiculous. Or like a a banana lady. That would like break your neck. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And kill people in front of you. Yeah. And behind you with the fins. Yeah. But those those things are pretty ubiquitous. Um, And also like the parking spots for the surfing are actually, they're like equipped for surf cars. So they've got like washing stations and like just kind of the specific thing. Surf and, like, cars. Yeah. So like if you're going like me, I'm going surfing. I need to drive to the beach. I need to park my car somewhere 
take and then go surf and then come back. But you know, I'm covered in sand and you know, I need to wash stuff off. I've got to take a shower, all these things. Uh, at least anyway, the parking lots in Yugawara are come equipped with like little washing stations that have like showers and stuff. That's nice. Yeah, it's good. It means it basically means you get into your car and you're not just like spreading sand everywhere. Yeah, sand in cars is not good. Yeah. As well as removing like the salt water from your wetsuit, right? You don't want that stuff sticking in there because otherwise it'll end up deteriorating. You guys are bringing back the memories of living in Florida. There's sand everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sand is really nice to look at, but uh, once it gets somewhere, it just uh, it keeps on spreading. It's kind of like COVID. Yeah, it's very the original COVID. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, surfing is good. I think I'm going to go next Thursday um, as well. What else is... Uh, but yeah, a lot of surfing, a lot of climbing, a lot of scuba. Not so much camping. I want more camping. A lot of rock and roll. Rock and roll is coming back. I'm telling you, like, man, you're like an action figure. You, like, have all these different attachments and, like, now Matt surfs and now he's mountain climbing and now he's farming. This is the goal. (laughs) This this is the goal. I mean, it's, it's like we've talked about it before and we're we've kind of started working on it a bit, but Matt is, we need to make a video game based off of Matt's life. I mean, well, cause originally though, it was more of like taking the video game and my life is kind of like it, but now the tables have turned. Right. Right. Okay. I, I'll take that as a compliment. Living the mini- oh, and we were, we were also talking to specifically about the, the fishing mini games of, of video games just mm. across the board tend to suck. And so we were so talking. So you're going to learn to fish? No, 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 no. Well, yeah, but I mean, I already know how to do that. Um, but no, what we were talking about is like, but especially RPGs, usually it's like just understood that you're going to have like a water experience of some type. And generally that has like fishing has been locked into that. And everybody hates the, or maybe they don't hate, but they certainly aren't like the most exciting part of any game that I know of. Mm-hmm. And so we were, what we were talking about was like, well, what if we replaced the surfing element with a surfing element, or I'm sorry, a, <laughs> the fishing element with the surfing element Yeah, yeah. And for like a different kind of water experience in a game, which I thought would be cool. That would be very, very cool. Especially if you had to like, you could have the sharks like come in randomly and you have to like, you know, do the pose on the board. Yeah. 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 And then maybe you could have like a, a, um, a horizontal thing that you had to like, uh, Oh, the balance, the balance. Yeah. yeah. You have to balance the yeah. board because in real life, it's really hard to stay in that position for like 10 minutes and people fall. Oh God, that must suck. Dude, that people must fall suck. And they freak the fuck out. I know. I bet they do. Yeah. And yeah. Then, oh fuck. It brings back memories. That's like, the worst. <laughs> I remember. You gotta it. press X and O and X and O. And if you press X or O too many times without pressing the other one, then you're dead. Or no, you and don't do that. You could just, you. you could literally just make it like, like, like dance, dance revolution. Of It's like a music game, except instead of there's a dancing figure on stage, it's you're not going to fall in the water and get eaten <laughs> <laughs> or lose a limb from yeah. one of the sharks yeah i could play that this sounds like a, a fun game idea actually oh dude dance dance not get eaten put, by the sharks revolution put it on a phone <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Then it just has a balance yeah, the the accelerometer, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and then like uh, you could purposely make it so like you have to turn left or have to yeah turn right. yeah yeah don't get eaten Surf's up. Time's you can make up. it like Pokemon Go and you see all these people like doing that thing with their phones. It's like, oh God, what a bunch of idiots. Yeah. Actually, even the surfing component, like, you know, you swipe to maybe catch a wave. And when you're on the wave, you have to balance the phone to keep balanced. And then also to kind of follow the direction of the wave to, to keep, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. guys are going to create the next uh, video game are that there turns everyone in games? Tokyo into zombies. We got to do some, re- it's always a, about the research. There's probably some surfing games out there. But probably not that many. I don't think I've ever heard of one. There's not that many. No. I, I've seen a surfing video game. I think it sucked. I feel like if there, if I have seen any, it was like, Almost certainly for Nintendo, not Super Nintendo, but like Nintendo. And yeah. It had very 80s branding. Way back in the day, I think there were a lot more. I feel more. like there was some Dreamcast game that did surfing. Man, Dreamcast was great. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. It was. I miss Dreamcast. Surf, surfing game. Sega, con- Sega consoles in general have just some gems, man. I wish Sega was still, honestly, man, because I, I think Nintendo's the Bore, most boring fucking company out. I cannot 
stand Nintendo. Why? Because they reuse all their yeah, brands? It's just, yeah, Sega it's just does. Over like and over don't. and over, over, and over, and over, and over, and over again. Sega does right. what Nintendo don't. Oh, oh yeah, that was that was a catch was, line. Yeah. yeah, that was a thing that I think that the was catch in, line. I, if I'm not mistaken, I think that Did was. Did I just make a fishing joke on accident because I'm stupid? I think that Sega actually flexed really hard on that, and that ad ran in the first issue of Nintendo Power. <laughs> 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 I might be mistaken, but I hope I'm not. Um, so there's a really really good Netflix show called High Score. And they talk about um, Sega competing with Nintendo and winning uh, back in, I think, like, you know, what was it, the, the 90s? Yeah. But um, and yeah, for a time, Sega Genesis was just eating Nintendo's lunch. Yeah, they, they, they made, they wanted to brand Sega as, like, the cool older brother. Yeah. And, like, it had all the adult games or, like, the games that, because you couldn't get blood on the Mortal Kombat for Super Nintendo, but Sega had the blood right. and all. And I think they had, like, there was a cheat code you could get it later for Super Nintendo, but... Sega had this more adult, you know, image and for young, like boys, that's cool. So they, they killed it. Um, and this was all, uh, Sega America kind of took this marketing strategy. And then Sega Japan ended up just torpedoing it. Right. Oh, really? I think that's what it was. They didn't have that in the, in the high score. Uh, I I think I, there's a YouTube documentary about this and there, there was a seer. If I remember correctly, there was a serious difference of, opinion let's say between the ceo of sega america and sega japan oh yeah 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 uh there was like i think the the japanese uh ceo even um what is it he he heard the plan from the american ceo and they all walked out of the room without saying anything and so the american guy's like well shit i guess i can't do anything he's like he's like you know when i hired you i told you you could do whatever you want so just fucking do it (laughs) <laughs> so he ended up doing it but you know it was not a good relationship yeah yeah which is unfortunate because that was such a good company i mean they're still a company i don't even like what do they do now they still make games they yeah. sonic okay and sonic yeah. yeah also sonic they're yeah. they're still Rings. big in the arcade space as well yeah. Uh, yeah, but it, I mean, even the, the arcade, arcade space, space, like that's still a business model. <laughs> it actually, uh, surprisingly, in the states and whatnot as well, there is a lot. There is a big arcade cabinet industry. It's not like a super, you know, like high value industry, but well, actually, one of the biggest, uh, like, minor victims of the pandemic was all of the barcades. A yeah. lot of them closed their doors because people weren't going. I was actually working on a game that was going to get released in like over a hundred barcades in America, but because of COVID that project has been put on hold. So COVID ruined everything. Sure yeah. did. Damn. Damn. Well, on that bombshell, Matt, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thank you guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. Hey listeners. That's right. You, you listener right there. Who do you think should be our next guest on Tokyo Wave? Let us know. Drop us a line at wave at tokyowave.jp. We hope you enjoyed Tokyo Wave. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Join us again next week on Tokyo Wave. Tokyo Wave.